Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk about life cycle operations of a virtual network function that comes on top of a multi region and multi cloud environment. My name is Noi. I'm one of the R&D directors in CloudBand, a business unit in Alcatel Lucent. Here with me, Noah, Limor, and Michal, senior software engineers from the team. Uh, together, we will walk through the life cycle operations of the virtual network functions. We will start with showing you the requirements around deploying, scaling, monitoring, and healing. We will detail the challenges that exist today in OpenStack. And uh, we will show you how we address those uh, challenges and provide solutions for them. So before we start, uh, a, little about, a little bit about what we are doing to give you a context about uh, why we need to challenge those problems. So CloudBand is a business unit in Alcatel Lucent. Uh, Alcatel Lucent provide uh, solutions for the NFV needs today. We provide uh, NFV infrastructure, NFV orchestration solutions, SDN solutions, and uh, also virtual network functions that can onboard on those clouds. Um, CloudBand is a business unit that was formed four years ago, and it focuses on the cloud platform that uh, address the NFV needs. Uh, we have a strategic partnership with uh, infrastructure vendors like HP, Intel, and more. Uh, we have an ecosystem with more than 50 uh, vendors that uh, onboard virtual network function, testing them, making sure they are working properly. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we are active players in the open, open source area. We are contributing in OpenStack, in Oasis, and other area, and it keeps us uh, uh, open as, as we can, and we stay with it uh, up to date with the latest uh, features we have. Uh, we have in our business unit around 150 engineers, and we are located in Israel. So that's it with the marketing stuff to give you a context. Now let's dive into the uh, challenges and the solutions that we provide. OK. So uh, every one of us relies on telco applications to make them constantly reachable and accessible. We, we've grown used to the fact that we can call whenever we want, whomever we want, wherever it may be. But think about what this entails. Think about the order of a million of human work hours that was dedicated to make these applications as, de as reliable, as uh, dependable as they are today. But this, all of this work was dedicated to make this application in a physical boxed world. As we can see here, every telco application in its physical form was made in a special box which, con which contained both the software and hardware. The software was written and ran on uh, very closely integrated with the dedicated and expensive hardware. This, this fact made the service providers have to think a lot of times when, for example, for a service provider, when he has to scale an application, he has to anticipate ahead of time uh, how many of these boxes does he need to make this scale cost effective, since every one of these boxes of course, had a financial cost for the hardware itself. And on top of that, you need a, a person, a technician, who specializes specifically in this box to come install it and later on maintain it through the application lifetime. So this thing is what's causing now the, this NFV transition we're seeing. So every one of the, every, all the service providers are trying to move forward and make the, the VNFs they run, uh, sorry. Uh, to make them virtual VNFs, and well, all this while keeping them at the quality they have today. So they're trying to redeploy all of these services on a cloud architecture, which will enable them to run on a common IS layer with uh, shared compute network and storage resources. On top of that, we're going to also have a management layer to enable all of these VNFs to have uh, life, cycle, pre life cycle steps run automatically and uh, generically. So when we're talking about application lifecycle management, there are a few steps that we're familiar with, of course. The first step is onboarding the application and testing it. After that, we go to deploying the application, which should be on a cloud application as automatic as possible. 
Later on, once the application is running, we need to scale it, maintain it, and heal it all the time. This is done while we constantly monitor the application in all the layers we can to make us know constantly what its real state. And of course, later on, we terminate it. So today, we're going to focus on four main steps here. The first one is deploy, scale, monitor, and heal. And I'm going to start with the deploy phase. So when we look at deploying uh, a VNF, VNF, the main problem we have, the main requirement we have is the distribution. Since when you talk about VNFs to keep their service level agreements, they have to be very massively distributed. For comparison, if you look at the Amazon IT cloud, they have nine data centers all over the world which shares all of their applications. But uh, the telco applications in their physical form, some of them had to be deployed uh, with an instance on every city they operate in. So to get this in OpenStack, we have three options we can look at. We have the single region option, which is uh, a local data center, so not a lot of distribution there. We have the multi-region option, which has uh, multiple regions all, run by the, all uh, managed by the same keystone for authentication and have the same horizon. This brings us a lot closer to the deployment requirements we, we want. But there are still some limitations here. For example, the first one is that Keystone, well, when we, run to, we want to run it in HA on different nodes, might become a problem. The second one is that we, if we want to actually have a very massively distributed application, this means that we usually would we'd like a policy placement engine that will tell us how will we, will we, can we optimally deploy it, on which node should we put each resource and not decide it on our own. So what we're doing in CloudBend is that we have uh, something a little different here. We have on every data center a, s a separate instance of uh, OpenStack, and we've developed a top-level management layer which can look at it from the top level and see all of the nodes and all of the resources. And once the person wants to deploy the application, he can tell it how will, well, will he want to divide it, and then it will tell him where, where is the best data centers to deploy the resources. So we have the management layer on the, on the other options as well, but this is where it, where it comes really, really important. So I'm going to show a small demo here of deploying an application. So just going to log here, log into the screen here. This is the CloudBind GUI. Okay. So I'm going to, this application was already on borders. So I'm going to walk into the catalog here. And we're going to see it in a second. So this is an application of a VNF demo. That's what I call it. It has uh, three servers. And uh, each server has two storages. We're going to see all of this soon. I'm choosing here uh, the networks and the images. You can see here and keepers. They're all distributed through all the data centers. And I'm going down to the segment section where I'm going to have it distributed. So I'm going to add a segment here. The first segment is going to be on cloud owned in Vancouver, right here. And I'm going to add another one. And it's going to be in Tel Aviv. And we're going to divide here the, the tiers of the application between the segments. I'm going to choose 100% because we have uh, one server per tier here, so it doesn't really matter. But you can do it uh, in whatever percentage you want. And this enables you to have an application run in HA on different nodes. Uh, so it's useful. So I'm going to deploy it now. So it's going to deploy. We're creating a stack on OpenStack while we speak, and uh, we're going to see it later when it finishes. Just want to show you here our runtime view. This shows the topology of the application. I'm going to expand it. Oh, sorry. Thanks. 
So we see here that we have three tiers. Each of them has one server and two volumes attached to it. And you can see down below on the left, on the left side that we have two of them on Tel Aviv and one of them in Vancouver. That's the distribution view. So let's go forward. We'll, look, we'll come back to that later. Uh, So now I'm going to talk about uh, scaling. Well, as Nora well, already mentioned, the uh, virtual network functions are in transition phase between the physical world and the virtual one. As a result of this phase, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. As a result from this phase, uh, we still have some legacy code that was running on a dedicated hardware that now is imported to the cloud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, this legacy code is, um, relies on a specified physical configuration. And as a result, both the scale in and scale out are relying on a restricted rules. Uh, for example, the next VM in scanning group can be different from the previous one. It can require different image. It can require different configuration. Furthermore, uh, another critical requirement is controlling the scaling uh, order or uh, sequence. <laughs> Achieving those capabilities in OpenStack today is very challenging because he do not support distinguishing between uh, different resources in the scanning group or controlling the, um, the sequence scaling. No. To solve this problem in CloudBand, we are today using stack update and resource scope. It allows to control both the uh, parameters of instance in a scanning group and the scaling sequence. But it also means we are not using scanning group. And we are not um, enjoying all that it gives. We cannot enjoy, for example, the um, auto scaling on a cyanometer alert. Um, and uh, sometimes update stack can take a long time, and it, and it will affect the time of a um, simple scaling event. Moving forward, we are now uh, presenting a set of blueprints uh, to give these uh, capabilities to hit. This blueprint includes uh, features like uh, adding index and parameters to uh, um, and adding index and parameters to the scaling group. Okay, um, who wants to talk about monitoring? Yay, monitoring! Woo! <laughs> We are now going to talk about monitoring, especially finding the fault monitoring. When talking about monitoring, we need to consider two fundamental issues. One, time is money. I want to find and I want to fix the problem as fast as I can. The second one, at the end of the day, every cloud application is sitting on a bare metal node. That means that we have actually three layers of monitoring. The physical layer, the virtual layer, and the application layer. Uh, each layer ca can generate tons of alert. Uh, and one system event can generate uh, a lot of uh, events on the different um, layers of monitoring. And I know that knowledge is power, and sometimes I need every bit of information to solve the problem. But too many, da too many data can, get, can create a chaos and hide the real problem. For example, if I have a bunch of uh, alerts on VMs being down, I can miss the one alert about the host being down. And not understanding the relationship between the host and the VMs will affect uh, the way of finding the problem. OK, so for monitoring the different layer, we have different tool. We have Nagios and Ganglia for the physical layer. We have Cyanometer for the virtual one, and we have um, Monasca and different built-in uh, tools for the application. CloudMint collect all the alerts from the different tool, analyze it, and virtualize the relationships between the different layer and the correlations between the alert. You can see over there uh, on the top the a sunburst view of the relationship between the different uh, layers. Every data Every data center is actually a slide. Uh, on top of that, you have the 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm so aware. <laughs> on top of that, you have the host, the availability zone, and the VMs. Here, you can see the connection between the different alerts. Um, we can see here that we have, here, it starts from here. You have a memory load that leads you to a, a host fall down, which uh, creates a lot of uh, VM alerts, which will affect my tier and eventually will make a failure in my application. Hello? Okay. okay. So in continuous to root cause analysis on monitoring that Limor just discussed, once a problem has been detected, it has to be healed by the management layer. In our case, we are talking about CloudBand. It doesn't matter if the problem already affected the applicative layer or it will affect it soon. Let's take one example of a problem that is about to affect the applicative layer but hasn't yet. Imagine a fan is malfunctioning on a physical host. What is likely to happen is that the host will overheat and shut down, killing all the VM hosted on that host. A healing solution that is very favorable for such a problem is migrating all the VM to a different host. The placement of such a host cannot be chosen arbitrarily. It has to comply with certain SLAs agreed upon between the telco vendor and his customer, the service provider. SLAs is service level agreement. I'm sure you know. Uh, so such SLA can include, as specified here, uh, zero downtime or data backups to make sure as smooth as experience as possible and continuous of service to the customer. For example, let's take a uh, service where it's very important. Imagine you're making an emergency 911 call and your call doesn't get through because the service is undergoing migration. Clearly such a behavior is unacceptable for this kind of service. Healing challenges. So today, OpenStack lacks sufficient support for automatic healing. One of the reasons for this is that sometimes healing flows are very complex. If we take the migration example, we can make it even more complicated by uh, adding a demand for all applicative processes on the hosted VM as much as possible being gracefully shut down. Another requirement can involve a reservation of IPs or reattachment of block storage. In a distributed environment, there are even more challenges. The distances between the original placement of the host and the target location can be very big. And that could be problematic if you want the process of the healing to happen fast enough. So, uh, the way you can help the process to be fast is doing some preparation steps in advance. Uh, examples that we are doing specifically in CloudBand, as you might have noticed from what Noah said, we distribute all images in advance and even we do it uh, very useful for the user. He can deploy the image in either OpenStack node and we distribute it from there all over the system. It doesn't have to go through our management layer. And another example is the creation of virtual networks. So, oh, I'll hide it. So, <laughs> sorry. A deeper understanding of what the problem is will always give you a more optimal solution. Clearly, migration isn't always a solution, and another favorable approach is redeploying the resources somewhere else. To make it more optimal, you can use tools such as Limor described for root cause analysis, because always when you know what the problem is, you're more likely to find a better, quicker, more optimal, adapted solution that will fix your problem better. If you're lacking right now the option to find the root cause of your problem, there is another approach that is based on gradual treatment process that tries different healing solution in escalating severity. So this is an example here. Uh, once a problem has been detected, you can go to your lightest solution possible that is quicker. So this is an example for such a flow for an application. If you find a problem in your applicative layer or somewhere you don't know, you can start with the applicative layer and simply restart the process. That will solve your problem if it was a software problem, like a deadlock that was pushed in by some careless developer. 
If that worked, wonderful. If it didn't, you go on to the next solution in a higher severity. You can try to reboot the VM. If that worked, excellent. If it didn't, you can try redeploying the VM somewhere else. And if all else failed, you can go to the old world approach and just call a human. So what are we are going to show in our demo very soon uh, is a solution based on two open stack tools, Convergence and Mistral. Convergence is a set of blueprints in heat project that is aimed towards uh, fixing a stack whenever it is different from its template for some reason, usually a failure. Like if a service is in error and uh, it should be up by the template, because obviously you don't want to deploy a server in error, uh, then it should fix it in, in some way and get it back up. In Kilo, the first phase was already pushed, and today it doesn't co uh, include any fixing capabilities. It only has the option to do an API call of check stack, and if the stack is different from its template, change the stack state. Mistral is the workflow engine of OpenStack. It allows you to write a complex healing flows that fits your application as best as possible. So uh, let's see the uh, Mistral workflow. This is our Mistral workflow. It's a very simple one. It's so written specifically for this demo. Um, what we are doing is simply checking every minute if the stack is OK. And if it's not OK, we will, do, we will update the uh, stack with update stack, which is an API in heat. Uh, we check if it's OK with the convergence tool that was described. Um, so the demo will shortly start, and I will explain you the rules, okay, and you so can scan now. So what we're going to do now is uh, demonstrate how we automatically heal the application. So I need the audience assistance here. I need everyone to take out their cell phones and go open the browser and go to this uh, address. You will be asked to uh, enter your name and company name. And then you will uh, uh, get the game view where you will have to hit on those small Linux penguins. Every time a blue one comes out, you need to hit him on, on the head. Every penguin represents a VM or a volume in our system. You will see it uh, live uh, happening. We have a scoreboard, and the winner will get a North Face Fleece with the CloudBand logo on it. So go ahead, I'll give you like 20 minutes to go inside. And I'm switching to the scoreboard view with the runtime view. 20 seconds, 20 seconds. 20 seconds yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'll show the URL again. start play by the way I think you can already uh, see the okay now we can see the players I'll maximize the screen okay so okay you can see on the scoreboard, you can see David from CloudBand. OK, we are not giving prices to CloudBand, so make sure you are not uh, winning. We have uh, second place. OK. Who is Don, by the way? He's focusing on the game. So the minute one of the, v oh. the VMs or the volumes will get 500 seats, uh, sorry, 200 hits in total, it will go down, and then we will see the Mistral workflow automatically heal uh, the VM or the volume. So 
I think it will take like another half a minute. One of the volumes has already 150 hits. Okay, game over. So we have a winner, Don from Sandvin. Who is it? Come to the stage, we'll give you the freeze code. You can see in the meanwhile that the volume number three over here was hit. You can see it turned yellow. Now the workflow engine runs on the background. Now it became red. It detached and destroyed the volume. And in a minute, the, the workflow will heal it, create a new volume, attach it to the VM, and it will become green. So it takes like between one minute to one and a half minutes. You can come to the stage. I'll give you the fleas in the meanwhile. All right. There we go. So as, uh, as we said earlier, there is a cron job of Mistral that uh, what he's actually doing is checking the stack in the background. And uh, if it recognizes a failure, it runs an update stack. The update stack actually fixes the, the problem in the, uh, in the topology and creates a new volume. So sometimes it takes more than a minute. Yeah? On the way. Try to refresh, maybe. Okay. Oh, and the new volume became live. You can see. Uh, a new volume was uh, added to the system and was connected to the server, and the system can continue to run. So, uh, thank you very much. So just to conclude, we walked through the uh, operations of a virtual network function. We talked about the requirements and the challenges that exist today in OpenStack and how we address them around deployment, uh, scaling, monitoring, and healing. Uh, we have a follow-up session uh, 10 minutes from now about uh, virtual EPC, the challenges around there, and how we handle uh, root cause analysis and monitoring. So we, you are welcome to stay. Yeah. Uh, and now we're open for questions. If anyone has a question, feel free to ask. Yeah. So you want to answer that? The problem wasn't the different component. The problem was that we need the different parameters or configuration in each one. It can be uh, like two VMs that have the same image or something, but they need different configuration. So virtual network function, usually a scaling group, doesn't really represent a virtual scaling group because uh, the, next, the fifth VM is not necessarily similar to the fourth VM. It might include different image, different configuration. That's why the use of today's scaling group is not uh, address this need. So we, as uh, Limo mentioned, solving that by working with uh, a, a resource group or even uh, with workarounds like update stack, preparing in advance the, the, the scaling options and doing update stacks. And we have uh, uh, two, blip, two blueprints that are now in uh, progress for adding those uh, capabilities to the scaling group. Okay, thank you very much.